Welcome to another edition of the Will Be Blood Fight Show. I'm your host, Dave Duenas, on Ed Magic TV. I'm in Hollywood at the Wild Card Gym with my man, Freddie Roach. We got uh, Alejandro Alacan Perez sparring and helping out preparing the Irish Lightning, which is Dean. I believe his last name is Bride. Dean is a junior welterweight. Alakan is a is a 122 pounder. Dean is a prospect of Freddie Roach right now. He's being the boxer. He's working the ring, getting prepared for his December 20th match. And what Alejandro is pretty much doing is being the pressure fighter here because of the fact that we don't know what type of style of fight Dean is going to be facing on December 20th. So it's to prepare him and be ready for any kind of avenue that's going to be uh, pretty much what he's going to have to try to drive through. Ooh, beautiful. Caught him with an overhand right. What Alejandro's doing basically is chopping him down in the stomach, bringing him down to eye level. Dean being the much taller guy, he probably should be using his jab. He's letting the much shorter guy kind of get in there when he shouldn't. Nice. That's a nice spin out of uh, for Dean, getting out of the way of danger. Now Dean's going down to the body. He's kind of opening up here. Ooh, nice, nice uppercut for Dean. This was the uh, first uh, spawn round down for both these guys. Alejandro Alacan, Perez, and Dina. Iris Lightning, Brian. And now we see Freddie uh, giving some instructions while he was talking on the phone to uh, Brian. Is Brian? His last name? Dean Byrne. Dean Byrne. Okay. My bad. Dean Byrne. The Irish Lightning Dean Byrne. He's using that jab there. Using that height that he has, the advantage. You see that Alejandro's trying to chop him down with that hook. That's his signature punch. Is those hook to the body. Now Dean is an undefeated fighter too. And like I said, he's got a match on uh, December 20th. I be believe in uh, La Habra. Comes from Dublin, Ireland. We're a little bit on the low action here. Right now, that jab is pretty much keeping Alejandro on the outside. Nice, nice. Left hook. Kind of caught Dean off balance there.
Nice, nice. Caught him again with that hook. This time it was the uh, overhand right. I like to see Alejandro stop kind of coming in with his hands down. What he's doing is looking for the body, but he should kind of keep his hands up. Dean just needs to use that distance. Nice uppercut. Got 10 seconds left on the clock. Ooh. Nice mix right there. There you go. Now my understanding is Dean has got a pretty good punch. He's uh, KO, KO'd, I believe, already a few of his opponents. Alakan has KO seven of his opponents, all with a body shot. I don't know what uh, instructions they're giving uh, Alakan, but really, it should probably be telling him to kind of move the head a little bit more and stop walking in. Like I said, sparring is about preparation and really doing things that you normally wouldn't do in a real match. So sparring sometimes can be a little deceiving. You can see the speed goes with Irish Lightning. That's why they call him the Irish Lightning. He's got a fast, fast left hand. I like the way he sets it up with his jab. We got Freddie Rhodes screaming out some instructions. We have Alakan's corner screaming out some instructions, which is to bob his head a little bit more, work that body. Ooh. This is a little bit of a better round for Alakan. Oh, yeah, when I said that, you got Irish Lightning using that left jab to push him back. Both these guys try to time each other, time each other, and uh, got tied up. Like I said, guys, this is really a sparring session. Um, most of the time, these guys go 60%, maybe 80%. It really depends on the moment, heat of the moment. But what it is is for these guys to really work on particular things they normally would not do on a fight night, okay? And uh, Lightning Irish is really just taking this opportunity because he doesn't know whether if he's going to be shot fighting a shorter, stockier, pressure fighter. So he takes on all on oncomers. And uh, really benefits uh, Alakan too to face somebody that has some height over him. As you can see, Alakan is a strong 122 pounder. Oh. He's catching them with those body shots. These guys are opening up, so you know this is not a 60%. Beautiful. How you doing, Brian? Hey, you doing, Good. So you got the speed there in the jab. How'd you feel in the ring today? Good, there. Really good? Good, there. You ready for December? Oh, yeah. I'm looking forward to it. Trying hard. Get good sparring like that. You know, we can't go wrong. Absolutely. How much of benefit do you feel that you get here being at wild card? Oh, 100%. I'm learning every day. Getting better and better each fight, you know? Mm -hmm. Being in there with Alejandro Alacan and Perez, can you kind of give me a little bit of uh, his power? Strong oh, fighter. Very strong. Doesn't let up once, you know? Doesn't stop throwing punches. That's what I need, you know? Absolutely, brother. Well, we hope to see a lot more of the 
Lightning Irish. Thanks, man. Okay? Appreciate Take it easy. And good luck, man, December Thanks. 20th. Hope Appreciate to see you there, okay? Thanks, man. All right. Let's go see down uh, uh, Alakan. See? Right here. Okay, I'm here with my man, Alejandro Alakan Perez. How you doing, brother? I feel good, thank you. How was it in there for you today? It was good. Um, I've been sparring all, all week, so I feel the, the body a little tense, mm -hmm. uh, which, but it's good. Uh, trying to work on my speed and uh, the body shot. Yeah. Now, you getting in there with a much taller guy, a uh, heavier opponent than you, right, obviously. Yes. Um, what benefits do you get in getting in there with somebody like that? Um, it's, I really work uh, with, a, with a guy like that. I try to work on uh, my blocking. Uh, not much on my power and my power because uh, if I work with smaller guys, the guys my my weight, mm -hmm. uh, then uh, they're faster. They move a lot, so I get to work on my speed with them. Now I saw they call him the Irish Lightning. There's a reason why. He's got a fast left uh, left hand. Yeah. Uh, it's jab. He's got a good uh, left hook. But then I also saw something a little bit, you know, uh, something that was kind of throwing you off was his uppercut. Yeah. He was kind of throwing that underneath, the sweeping type of awkwardness that he had. Right. How much problems do, do you think that you felt in there with him? Or do you feel like, you know what, this is a sparring session. I just go in there to work on the things that needs to be worked on. Um, well, it, yeah, like you said, um, it, um, you don't see it. You, Because uh, some fighters, they pretend to throw the uppercut, but they just do that little movement and they throw you another different one. But he's been, he caught me with that one uh, a couple of times and what I need to do is uh, just work on it. I, I know that that's a big mistake that I do and so I need to work on that and uh, just uh, on the bag or even with my trainer when uh, working the mitts, we need to uh, do the simulation and then I need to block it so I could take it off. You know, I saw the very traditional Mexican style, go to the body, work hard, take a great shot. Head movement was there, but then sometimes you would be a little bit stuck in the mud. You know, is there a reason for that? I mean, your head was not was yeah. there, but then when you would get in the pocket, your head wouldn't move anymore. Yeah, like I tell you, I'm a little stiff right now. Um, I feel my, you know, my body a little tense. Um, no, but actually, yeah, I know what you mean. Um, I go in there, you know, I throw my punches, I do some a little bit moving, but then I stay stuck, and that's when I receive the punches. That's the thing I'm, I've been working a lot, a lot um, in the gym. Um, but I, I think I, I feel when I when I feel better about with my body and you know not tense and not a little sore from all the work that I've been doing, I know I'll be able to move move more and receive less punches. You know we're we've been negotiating about doing a documentary about you, and I'm hopefully my my viewers get a chance of seeing a, a taste of what you're gonna bring into the fight game, uh -huh. into the whole division of 122. Right. Can you give me a little bit more of insight? What people don't understand, in a sparring session, they believe you should be perfect every time and out. Why do you think, why do you think people think that? And should they, is this sometimes a little misleading? Yeah, uh, people, I think people think that because they're, they're maybe expecting a little too much of the boxer. Um, it's like in, in any sport. Sometimes the boxer has its, his good days. You know, sometimes he has really good days where he looks like the world champion. Mm -hmm. Other times, he's just not there. Um, and sometimes it's so-so. Uh, but one thing is, a boxer needs to be 100% uh, dedicated to the sport. It's like like marriage. I'm married to the sport. I, I, I gotta dedicate, I've been dedicating my life to the sport so for 12 years now. So there's no looking back. In my, in my career, there's no looking back. I just need to see what's up ahead. and take a step by step, live day by day, and work hard. That's funny you say it's marriage. Guys right now that really don't know about you, the reason why we're doing do a documentary about you is because of the whole fact you got an interesting story. And But it's a very common story for fighters. At the age of 10, your parents sent you down here with your manager, and you've been pretty much kind of just groomed up to be a fighter. Right. Correct. Um, actually, my, my, I have an older brother. Uh, his name is Luis Perez. He, uh, some boxing fans may know about him. Um, he fought, he also fought, uh, he had a record of 7-0 seven, seven no with 7 knockouts, and then the last two he lost. The reason for that is, um, you know, just, he was, I guess, too young, you know, somebody, he needed somebody to look up to, I believe, and, uh, you know, maybe an older brother or something, like, like, so, sort of, like, I have him. Mm -hmm. um, after that, he retired, um, but I use what, what happened to him to, to better myself, to strengthen my, my career, to make the correct choices. Um, you know, I, for even from from, high, from 
from uh, elementary school to high school, and even now, no parties, no, no friends, you know, not going out. You know, I have friends, I talk to them, you know, they give me support, but not like going to parties and drink and, you know, have that type of fun. To me, my family is more important. Absolutely, brother. Is there anything you want to say to the people of Mexico? And please say it in our native tongue. Claro que sí. Quisiera decirles que es, eh, que aquí viene un peleador, este Alejandro Lacran Pérez, que les va a dar algo, algo muy bueno, este un nuevo, si se puede decir, un nuevo ídolo en un futuro. Ahorita me estoy preparando. Si, si soy este suficientemente uh, inteligente, no voy a decir que yo puedo con el campeón del mundo ahorita, ahorita porque no puedo. Yo lo sé. Estoy consciente de eso, pero hoy estamos trabajando. Poco a poco estamos trabajando hasta el punto que ya nos sintamos listos y para ese entonces ya estaremos listos para el que sea el que sea el que esté arriba. Thank you very much, brother. Taking your time with me, uh, Dave Duenas, the Will Be Blood Fight Show on YouTube.com with my man, my friend, and Magic TV. Thank you very much. Appreciate All right, brother. Thank it. you. All right, thanks.